Hi everyone, welcome back to Workshop and it's Workbench Upgrade time with a Rigol DHO series oscilloscope. Let's see how this new range of oscilloscopes can save you some serious bench space. So the new Rigol DHO series scopes hit the market with a lot of enthusiasm and curiosity to not only the features included in the range, but the sheer size. Look at it, it's tiny. So I contacted Rigol and after telling them I thought the visa mount on the back of the scope had winner written all over it, Talonic UK, the Rigol dealer here in the UK, gave me a DHO914. I've added a link below to the DHO 800 and 900 series on their site. Check them out. I'll also link down below to the EEV blog's review of the scope, but here today I'm simply going to put a unique feature of the scope through its paces, the visa mount on the rear of the unit. Visa mounts on a scope isn't new, but there are actually very few scopes that provide the option. And when Rigol provided it on their new DHO series scopes, I felt it was an absolute winner in conjunction with the sheer size of the scope. So in this video, I'm putting a DHO 914 visa mount through its paces on my workbench and trying out six different mounts, including fully articulated, swivel out only, bench top and bench clamp mounting. Now I'm lucky enough to have a deep workbench at 90 centimetres with a working area at the front of about 60 centimetres and that makes for 30 centimetres at the back for test gear. And I've also got three tiers of shelving above the workbench. However, if you're like me, you need to have all your gear within arm's reach all of the time. Something we all know just isn't feasible. And traditionally, our handheld multimeters are small and extremely portable, but generally our oscilloscopes are not. So we generally have to park our scope somewhere on the bench and depending on what you're working with on the workbench, it's often not ideal. Now my oscilloscopes are normally mounted on this tiered shelf here. It's actually quite a stretch to get at them. And obviously I can bring them down onto the workbench, but they're big and they're bulky and they take up valuable room. And importantly, they don't have a visa mount. So this is where the visa mount, and not to mention this size of the Rigol DHO series scopes, helps out tremendously. So let's take a look at the DHO 914 visa mount. So the visa mount standard it comes in 100mm or 75mm, and generally the more standard of the two is the 100mm, and that's what Rigol have chosen here. And as you can see, there are some metal threaded inserts here on the back of the scope that allow the standard 100mm visa mount to be attached. And if you haven't seen an actual visa mount itself, you'll get something like this on the end of some sort of articulated arm which will mount directly on the back of the scope. And you can see it lines up pretty well. And all you need to do then is screw it to the back of the scope. So the first visa mount I'm going to take a look at, and actually it's the one I've got bolted to my workbench at the back there, is this Grafema fully adjustable monitor stand. And it comes with a couple of options for mounting. It's got a bench clamp, but it's also got a bench top mount, which is the one I've happened to have used on my workbench right now. Now, the biggest problem you're going to have with these visa mounts, the fully articulated type like this, is the weight. Now, the DHO 914 comes in at about 1.5 kilos or 3.2 pounds. And as you can see, the capacity of this particular visa mount is between 2 and 9 kilograms or 4 and about 20 pounds. So it's actually a little bit light for this particular mount. However, let's get the scope mounted on it and let's see how it works out. So I've got the mount attached to the workbench. You can see it here, a single hole through the workbench, an 8mm threaded rod goes through with a nut on the underside and it's tight on the workbench. And as you can see, it can move around. Now the business end of the mount is the visa mount itself. And this particular one I quite like, but it's got a removable, a easily removable with this thumb screw here, which allows you 
to detach the visa mount, which means you can take the scope off its visa mount and back on again very, very quickly. So let me mount this to the back of the scope and then attach it to the visa mount. Now generally you don't get screws, so you've got to supply your own, which I have done here. And on the DHO 914, um, all you've got below it is the heat sink and fan assembly inside the scope and there's quite a bit of depth to the screws so there's no problem with these long screws here touching the actual heat sink or any of the electronics inside. No problem whatsoever. Now let's just mate it up. That's it, slides in and then I can put in the thumb screw to secure it down. And there it is, it's mounted, I can move it from side to side, I can tilt it forwards and backwards, I can push it down over at the right hand side, I can push it to the left hand side, and of course I can manoeuvre it up if I want to. There we are, just between my power supply there, and actually I can see back towards my oscilloscopes at the back there. So it sits at this dead space really rather well. And of course I can move it up if I want to. It really does enable you to put the scope wherever you've got free space on your workbench, whether you're working with small stuff or working with a big large piece of equipment, you can put the scope where you want and you keep your workbench clear. This is where the Visa mount comes into its own with such a lightweight scope in the DHO 800 900 series and the sheer size of it. In terms of cable management, as you can see, I've routed the power supply, the USB-C connector here, up through these two channels here. Keeps it nice and neat, keeps it out of the way, and it's just a case of plugging that into the back of the scope over here. And if you're using the RJ45, the USB, or any of the other connections, you can, of course, route them through there as well. So this particular mount, I like quite well. It handles the weight really nicely and it seems to fit in rather well on my workbench. So the next mount is very, very similar to the one I've already shown you. And this one is a Bontech, a very well-known mount manufacturer, and it's a GDM-01. But I wouldn't actually recommend it. Now, it is actually rated the same weight, two uh, kilograms minimum, a 4.4 pounds however I found that even on its weakest setting on the adjustment here it just wasn't able to uh, work properly the scope was too light for it now there is actually a way around it if you do actually have one and on the fixed uh, mount here which is not actually removable what you can actually do that's what I did to start with. I got some half kilogram weights here and I put four of them on the back there. I doubled them up uh, like that and attached them onto the back there with some silicon sealant. And with that weight, that extra two kilograms weight there, it was actually able to perform. Now it is actually a little bit slimmer than the one I've already shown, so it's a shame I couldn't use this one. However, I wasn't happy with putting weights on. Uh, it's an extra thing for everyone to purchase. And also the fact you can't remove the actual visa plate here. It's screwed on permanently unless you go and take out this Allen key. So I wouldn't recommend this one. And the next one, similar form factor, is an Envision MX200. And again, minimum 4.4 pounds or 2 kilograms. So I've gone ahead and actually mounted this one. So let's try it out. Now this one's actually quite good I think. It does seem to stay in the position you move it to. For the most part anyway. Until you get to the top where it just seems to creep away on its own accord. But I think they all do that to tell you the truth. That two kilogram limit there just not quite being met. So maybe this one here would actually benefit from a couple of weights at the back there. An extra kilogram, half a kilogram at each side with some sealant onto the back of that mount, it might help. However, this one doesn't have a removable visa mount, unfortunately. So it's not quite as good as the first one I showed. But I do like the arm in this one. It's really nice and easy to move around. 
And the next one is a Huanu HNWSS1. This is a wall mounting articulated unit. So let's see how this one fares. Well first thing, it does actually come with exactly the same removable visa mount with a thumb screw as the first unit I tried, so that's quite good. So let me just turn it round there and let's try it out. Well it's down at the bottom at the moment, if I come up. And it's, it's okay at the bottom end, but it does tend to run away rather quickly when this bar here is horizontal from there upwards it just tends to run away but I do like the unit it probably would work if it was weighted down with maybe one or two kilograms in the back there but again not quite as good as the first unit I tried albeit it does have the wall mount and the next one another bone tech unit and this time it's just a simple swivel out one there's no up and down it's just side to side and in and out effectively and here it is, it does actually do what it's supposed to do, there it is. Quite tight so it's not going to move around on its own. Now one thing this one does have, it does have a removable visa mount. However, you've got a couple of screws at the back there and this just sort of hooks onto the top there. So you put it at an angle like that, a little bit fiddly. And then swivel it down and then you put a couple of screws in at the back but they're not thumb wheels. So there it is, Bontech, and I think the model number is 237. And the last one is an Amazon Basics single monitor display mounting arm. And here it is here. It's one of those tube ones here. I quite like these. I've got these holding up my two uh, monitors on my workbench at the other side of the workshop. And they're articulated in terms of going from side to side. And if you want to go up and down, obviously there's a catch there. And you can just change that. So this might be suitable for somebody. It's obviously going to do well with the DHO series scopes. And it does actually have a quick release. Uh, if I can work out how to get there we go. A quick release on the actual visa mount itself. No thumb wheel required. Basically just a, a catch that you bend back and it releases it. Otherwise quite a nice unit up and down. Not too sure if you can adjust the tension on that uh, up and down there that, because actually, wow, that's quite tight, so you'd be grabbing the scope. Yes, there is an Allen screw there, so yep, you can adjust that and adjust the tension there. So I presume the same for these end caps here. So yes, I took the caps off there, and yes, there is adjustment there, and there's also adjustment there, so it looks like this is the whole thing's fully adjustable. So there we go, that's six tried out, but I think I'll stick with the first one I tested. I do like the bench mounting, I do like the full articulation that it's got, and I do like the fact it's got a thumb wheel uh, screw on the back there for quick releasing the uh, visa mount. Perfect. So if you are in the market for a new scope and you've got lack of bench space or you want to have the flexibility then definitely take a look at the Visa mounted DHO series oscilloscopes. Definitely add something new to the workbench in terms of having all your gear around you. So thanks to Telonic UK, the Rye Gold dealer here in UK for supplying this DHO914 to me. You're definitely going to see this uh, on my channel and any future repairs that I do. We'll definitely be able to get the scope in video shot much, much easier and position it around the gear that I'm repairing. And don't forget to check out down below in the description of the video the link to Talonic UK's website for the DHO 800 and 900 series and also the EEV blog review. So thanks for watching and remember you can comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help the channel grow. And if you want to help more directly then you can always donate via PayPal or Patreon in the links below. There's plenty more repair videos on my channel. Check them out and thanks for watching.